Hey everybody, welcome back to another Slime Fun Field episode with your host Boomer. Today I'm excited to be back with you. We've got four things that we're going to feature in today's episode that we really haven't paid a whole lot of attention to. And honestly, I, I didn't even know what some of these things were. I mean, I've never really played with them in the two years I've been playing with Slime Fun. Never touched them. Now some are relatively new. Some have been around for a while. But we want to dig right in. The first thing we're going to talk about today is the climbing pickaxe. Let's dive right into the guide here. And let's get this sucker going. Let's talk about the climbing pickaxe. Relatively cheap. Two steel, a hardened metal, and two sticks. Now in order to climb, you do need two of them. And in the guide, it does tell you all these blocks are what you are able to climb up. Now it's kind of weird that sand and gravel are in here. The salt is nice to see netherrack. There's terracotta, concrete powder, which is weird because concrete powder should have the same makeup as, as sand, but black stone, ice. I am surprised that you can do it on powder, but you can't do it on concrete. But even with that, this is still kind of cool. So we're going to go up stone, hold down right click, and you just see you climb. And if you have higher levels of efficiency, you'll climb faster. And yes, if you fall, you take damage. Now, as I'm going up, if I push forward, I can actually continue to go up. So if this were one big stone wall, I could continue going up. So it's pretty cool. Uh, it's not something I've spent a lot of time on, but you want to get up a mountain quick that doesn't have an easy way, like that wall over there. I mean, granted, you will hit a minor hiccup when you hit dirt, but if you had a much taller wall, like maybe a ravine that you were climbing out of, it'd be a good way to get you going. We're going to switch over to creative for this next one. I really should probably put the thing in my uh, in my inventory. That's not what I want. We want the parachute. That's right, the parachute. We're going to put this on and we're going to go for a fly here. Nice thing about parachute. <clears throat> Let's say you're working really, really high in your world and you've got this thing on. We're going to go ahead and toss these picks. To picks. Toss the picks, Boomer. All right, you're working way up here, right? And all of a sudden you fall and you trip and you start falling, but you've got the parachute on. No worry, just crouch. And it's very much like slow falling. Now you cannot navigate while you're coming down. You will come perfectly straight, but at least you come down to a nice, safe, soft landing. Very nice, could save you falling from a big height Parachute is three cloth and two chain out of Slime Fun. To make Slime Fun chain, three steel ingots give you eight chains. Cloth is uh, wool in an enhanced crafting chamber. Very cheap, very nice tool to happen to have if you're falling from like Y equals 200. Or you know what, even once Minecraft up to date to 117 and you're falling from Y equals 320, that'd be even cooler. Save your skin. Next one I want to look at is a tape measure, but I want to get, uh, let's see, where do we want to go? I think I've got some blocks uh, set up back over here where this will work better. Yeah, here we go. All right, let's use these. Let's pretend this is a spawner. And as you guys might or might not be aware, you can be within 16 blocks of a spawner radius, which doesn't mean just straight, you know, forward, left and right. It also means it angles and up and down. So to use a tape measure, shift right click on the block. You see where we set our anchor. And let's find out how far an angle can I go out to activate that spawner. Well, if I right click on the ground, I'm at 1456. So this spot will activate that spawner. What if that's also a spawner? Or what if this is also a spawner? You and I can do is set anchors at each one and find overlapping spots. How can I do it here? Yeah, 9.22. How far? Clearly, you can see we're within 16 blocks. So if you find a three or four spawner area in a cave underneath and you want to set up a grinder for all of them, the tape measure can help you find a spot where all four could be activated simply by making sure you're within 16 blocks. And remember, vertical also comes into play here. So let's try this. Let me grab a couple of dirt blocks just to show you how this works because it does measure so let's say from this spawner right we set this as our spot here's our yep, here's our anchor okay and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do this three blocks up in the air 
Come over, right click. I'm 11.18. What if I fell down one? 11.05. What if I'm down one more? So you can see it's not only taking into account the horizontal, the distance, but the height as well. So it works in a 360 by 360 rotation. It gives you every possible axis, which is so cool. All right, next thing we're going to talk about in here is the enchantment run. And this is something I haven't uh, talked about at all. I haven't looked at it. And we're going to also get us a sword. I want you guys to see how these all work. So goodbye, tape measure. Enchantment run. All right, let's get that run up here. We want the enchantment run, and let's make sure I got enough of them. Okay, boom, boom. Let's grab the sword. So let's start with the sword. There are different types of enchantments that can go on a sword, right? Unbreaking is one type. Mending is another type. Looting is a third. Sharpness, Bane, and Smite is a fourth. The Curse of uh, Vanishing would be another one. There's seven different types of enchantments that can go on a sword. So let's go ahead and chuck this on the ground. Same thing with our run of enchantment. You chuck it, it comes together, and it adds a random enchantment at a random level. We got mending. Mending is its own type. Right? So let's keep going. And why would you use this? Well, let's say you've got, there we got Bane 5. All right, we're off to a great start. So we're not going to get sharpness, but we do have Bane 5. If you're really in a slime fun, but you haven't done much in vanilla in terms of setting up a villager farm. Okay, knock back one out of two. I could live with that. But you've got all the materials to make these. Then who needs... Whoops, hang on. Try that again. You know, then you don't need a villager farm. I mean, you can get pretty decent tools put together. Look what we're at. Unbreaking two, mending, being five, not back. What's next? Fire aspect, okay? And then we also know Sweeping Edge is another one. And then probably Curse of Vanishing. Yep, there's Curse of Vanishing. Vanishing. And now we should probably get Sweeping Edge. And that should be it. Sweeping Edge 3. We've got a pretty good sword here. Looting's pretty weak. Or did we get looting yet? There we go. Looting 1. So we got all 8. I, th I think I said 7 before. There's actually now 8. So that should be it. Yep. So... Eight enchantments, and like I said, that's a decent sword. Looting kind of stinks a little bit, but, you know, you get one of those three or four spawner grinders in a world put together, and it's not going to make that big of a deal. You're going to get a lot of materials out of that anyways. So what about the pickaxe? Well, you've got five different enchantments. You've got either Silk or Fortune, Mending, Efficiency, Unbreaking, and then the Curse. So with a pickaxe, we're going to be able to put five different enchants. So we've got Silk Touch, so we will not see in Fortune on this one. What else would we just pick up? There's our Curse of Vanishing. Unbreaking 2, and our last one will be Mending. And Mending. So, efficiency kind of stinks. But other than that, I mean, it's a decent Silk Touch pick. If I'm out in the world and I find some Diamond Ore... And I've got Infinity Expansion with Fortune, you know, 2 billion on it. Well, Fortune 20 at least. You know, or even a Fortune 10 pick. I can still mine it and bring it back. So the Enchantment Rune isn't bad. And it, it's not an arm and a leg for cost. And like I said, if you focused on Slime Fun over the Vanilla World, well, let's just take a look at this. Let's bring up the Enchantment Rune, right? What do we got? Four Magical 3 Lumps. Four Magical Glass. Not that expensive. Just Magical 2. Lumps too, uh, flask of knowledge, glass, gold dust, relatively inexpensive. The run's a little, you know, okay, you need a phantom membrane, so you got to kill, um, boy, no, I can't remember the name of the phantom. <laughs> phantom membrane, uh, phantom. And then you got to get the run for water and air, some iron, magical lump three. It's not bad. Uh, here you need gas tears, of course, and feathers. But in Slime Fun, the ability to make all those farms exist. So... You know, I'd say this is a relatively easy enchantment to make once you've got the setup going. The last thing I want to talk about today is the bee armor. Relatively newer in the game. The helmet and the leggings are nothing to brag about. I mean, unbreaking for protection too, right? It's gold armor, not that big of a deal. The bee wing, when you're falling and you're about to crash in the ground, can actually stop you from crashing. And also, the boots, 
our no fall damage. So I'm going to take the elytra off for now. We're going to flip back into creative to go really high. And then we're going to fall back into survival and see what happens. All right. So survival mode. Here we go. Boots, do your thing. No fall damage. Isn't that nice? Let's take off the boots. Let's put on the B wings. So I want to make sure the boots don't interfere with the wings. Same thing. Let's go up high. And we're going to go head first right into the ground. You ready for this? We're going to fall and then we're going to activate it. Okay, here we go. B wings got us back safe to the ground. Isn't that sweet? That was pretty nice. So hopefully, guys, uh, there's something that you found in here that can help benefit you. Uh, like I said, these are things that we haven't really talked on. Upcoming here in a series, we're going to get to the specific individual add-ons again because a lot has changed. We're going to talk about some core changes to the base slime fund. We're going to talk about some major overhauls to chicken engineering. It's been completely redesigned. As a matter of fact, do not upgrade your server until your players have pulled all the chickens out of the out of the coops they will disappear as will all the materials inside of it if you update to the new version uh, i want to say after 1.1 on their website or i think it's development build six or seven they've automatically disabled updates for now to give you a chance to tell your players to get your materials out of there before you update so please do that once you've done that, go ahead and update to the new version. We're going to spend some time in Dynatech. There's a couple items that we haven't featured yet. We're going to spend some time with the new items in Foxy Machines, relatively new. As a matter of fact, I think they might be within the last couple of weeks. And I think we're also going to spend a little time in Fluffy as well. So, guys, I am so thankful for your watching, your comments, your feedback. We hit 400 subs this week. It blew my mind. I am so thankful and grateful for you guys. Keep up the comments, the participation, the ideas and suggestions for the channel. I really appreciate it. But as always, when you're playing Slime Fun, you got to go boomer or you got to go home. We'll see you later. <laughs>